everybody used to be heading in the same direction, wanting to drink the same sort of wines. Um, and, but nowadays, um, you've got some people who love natural wines, some people who wouldn't dream of drinking a natural wine, but um, really love quirky, unusual grape varieties. Other people who are mad about the Jura, you know, and, and a fine Jura wine now, for instance, has the same sort of status as a first growth Bordeaux because it's all widened out so much. Fantastic. Obrigado. I was born in a village of 40 people in, near, in the very, very far north of England, nearly Scotland. Um, and there was no wine culture at all then. In fact, when people said the word wine, they would say, wine, as though you know, it was something very exotic. Um, but I, the first wine I remember tasting was with my grandmother in the south of England at a ladies lunch and it was uh, a big branded uh, what they called Riesling it wasn't even Riesling it was actually Welsh Riesling um, imported in bulk from Slovenia chock full of chemicals and sugar when I started drinking wine in the early 70s as a student, certainly in Britain, a maximum of one bottle in every two was, really, was technically okay. I wouldn't say technically perfect, but drinkable. But at least one bottle in every two had severe faults, like often an excess of sulfur, for instance, certainly an excess of chemicals. Um, so wine today is infinitely better quality than it was then. Thank you. Very good research. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, as a result, my husband Nick and I have, were able to spend yesterday celebrating our 36th wedding anniversary here in Lisbon under beautiful blue skies and over the weekend enjoying some fantastic food and wine. My um, timing has been fantastic because I just started writing about wine as the British started to travel and abroad and started to understand wine. And wine started to be sold much more widely in supermarkets so that just ordinary people could go in and pull a bottle off a shelf rather than having to go into a an intimidating wine shop and pronounce the name of a bottle and something. Um, and I, my wine writing career also coincided with a time when you could establish a reputation without um, what there, uh, and, and expertise without what there is nowadays, which is, thanks to social media, much more comment. You know, everyone's an expert. Everyone can look up Wikipedia. Anyone can post on Vivino, anyone can, can add a comment at the bottom of an article saying, rubbish, rubbish. Uh, so it, it was, as I was establishing my reputation, um, it, about the same time as Robert Parker and same sort of situation, it was much easier. I don't say that I had anything like his influence, but it was much easier to, to be someone who was handing down expertise. No, the consumers didn't answer back. Um, not a surprise, but obviously um, Vini Verde has to be there. É, é fantástico termos esta esta perspectiva da agência Robinson dos vinhos portugueses. Sobretudo, dá-nos uma força especial, um elan especial para continuar a afirmar a nossa diferença pelo mundo. So it's Luis Pato, um, and it's his uh, Vinha da Rosa 05. Estamos muito contentes, até porque é o único, o único vinho da Bairrada, uma região pela qual temos lutado há muitos anos, sempre, e sendo uma das regiões menos vendidas em Portugal, é uma consideração enorme para nós saber que está entre os 10 vinhos escolhidos pela Agência. Well, the strongest, I think, are... Um 
that you've got all these lovely indigenous grape varieties which differentiates Portugal from the rest of the world and also grape varieties that are used to a hot climate. And I, I would expect to see them being planted much more in, say, Australia, South Africa, California than they are even already. Um, and you've got lots of old vines, which are very fashionable. Um, but then the weak point, of course, with related to old vines and very, very dry summers, is that yields are very low, aren't they? Which I suppose um, is reflected in some of those high, price, high retail prices. I don't think Portuguese wine producers travel enough, actually, if they really want to export. Um, I mean... From my, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in London. We have, we, it's a fabulous place to be interested in wine. There are probably four trade tasting, trade events every day during the week. Masses of consumer tastings and things in the evenings and at weekends. And I, so I probably get most invitations going. And I, I don't see Portugal as well represented in events, certainly, in, and you would expect them to be in London more than anywhere else, really, um, as they should be. The next wine is, is made by uh, the Portuguese wine producer who is probably best known to non-Portuguese because he travels so widely and has um, uh, looks and personality that tend to be memorable. It's not the case with all countries that they can make wines that age as long as Portuguese wine. Of course, we live in a fast-forward age where um, um, not everyone is prepared to store wine. Young people today are fascinated by a hundred different wines, that r rather than just all going in the same direction towards something that's supposed to be the pinnacle. They're much more interested in experimenting with the lesser spotted Vermentino from Slavonia or, you know, or a Japanese Koshu or something like that. And that's very healthy. It's great. Good for my books and my website too. <laughs> so this is a wine made very defiantly and, and <coughs> deliberately in Amphora. And there it is. Um, in Alentejo. Excellent one. Lovely. Fiquei muito surpreendido com esta distinção. Um, isto é um projeto muito recente, é um projeto paralelo, um projeto pessoal meu um, e, que, um, e que surgiu da necessidade de fazer, de criar vinhos que, que de alguma forma vão de encontro uh, a que alguns os mercados vão pedindo, mas que são também vinhos fora da caixa, vinhos que, que expressam de uma maneira mais pura, autêntica, o terroir onde são de onde são originários, neste caso de Vidigueira. Um, e, e nesse sentido fiquei muito surpreendido pela Francis Robinson a uh, escolher o Bojador Vinho de Talha uh, como um dos 10 vinhos portugueses no, nestes 10 anos. You don't find much technically imperfect wine in the mainstream, but you do find technically imperfect wine among natural wines. So uh, what saddens me about the natural wines as a topic is that people tend to take strong positions, either for or against. And I think it would be foolish for mainstream wine producers to write off the natural wine movement. It's a symbol of what particularly younger people are looking for, fresher, lighter. Um, but I, I, it, I think it's very tedious when you go to the sort of natural wine bar and you get a, a lecture from the sommelier about what's evil about wines that aren't natural. Neither of those positions are correct as far as I'm concerned. Um, so here we go, yes. Um, Barbados, Ricardo uh, Freitas, experimental, um, began as an experiment, Tinta Negra. É um motivo grande e enorme orgulho ver um vinho Madeira, e particularmente meu, uh, nesta seleção, e ainda por cima, de uma grande autoridade como é a Jensis Robinson, acho que é mesmo muito bom. Por outro lado, o facto dela ter escolhido a casta tinta negra, acho que foi espetacular, porque desde, desde 95 
atacando, a lutar pela tinta negra e acho que este é um momento muito alto para o trabalho que tem sido feito com aquela casta. Recently, I have a, a, a column every Saturday in the Financial Times, and I had to say that as a wine writer, I never experienced any prejudice or any um, barriers really, and sometimes it was even in my favour. But I and I, I think women in the wine trade, I've never been in, in the wine trade, um, have until recently in Britain been discriminated against quite badly. They've done, as in so many other fields, they've done lots of the work, if not the majority of the work, but found it very difficult to get promoted to the top levels. However, recently, three of Britain's biggest wine companies have had a female CEO. So at least in, in the UK, things are changing. A little bit too late, but they're, they're changing for the better. So it was made by Peter Sillington and sat in cask for more than 40 years and was finally bottled in 2015 as a kind of special single harvest tawny. É, é, digamos, fantástico fazer parte do top 10 português com o um vinho do Porto, digamos, moderno, com a assinatura do Charles e que, digamos, tem todo aquilo que é o trabalho da família Simington, começando com o Peter, como foi referido. Portanto, eu só poderia dizer uma palavra. Fantástico. Round a table. I like to have great wine, great food, but to just talk about the wine would be very, very boring. And even with really, really great wines, Yes, but you, they're so special, you should acknowledge them and talk about them briefly. But the odd time I'm at a round a table where people only talk about wine, not odd, no, 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 no. I would like to be remembered um, as showing that um, women can really achieve something in wine. And I'd like to be remembered as somebody who wrote, um, who was, um, who wrote entertainingly, but also informatively. Um, and I would like to be remembered as someone who was always fiercely independent and didn't, didn't had their own opinions and was never connected with people in, you know, with people in the wine industry, but always just outside it. I'd describe myself as a parasite on the wine trade. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, fantastic. My, our, our son will love that. Oh, fantastic. E a partir de agora esperamos todos que Jancy se vista ainda mais a camisola dos vinhos portugueses. Veja este e outros episódios do programa A Essência na página de Facebook da Revista de Vinhos.